and the awfulness of these, my most twisted anxieties, some of them I feel rising up into me, as a blackest fog, but there are others I feel them descending down over me, and they meet in the deepest place in me. Fears from thoughts so dark that they will, in the smallest fraction of the moment before they are grasped by any man, they will have already grasped that man back. And in the time it takes for them to grab that person's soul, they have already yanked it so very far downwards, that it is made heavy, as the heaviest stone, and harder still. And I am made heavy doctor by the stone in me. And the stone is made pregnant by the fear flowing through me. I can see that my terror must never be allowed outside of me and that I must always carry it within me. Because I know, Doctor, because I see how, that if it happens, if this black water in me is allowed to break, before the rabbi breaks as fast I know what will happen, and it will happen to everything. I understand, that I'm so close to hurting the universe entire, that I would hurt everything in all the universes, that all of creation would be wounded through me, in that one and awful moment. And I wake up frantic and worried, I am covered in sweat. And I am wondering doctor, what if, God forbid, what if spring comes early again, what will happen, what will happen then? As smallness can be a path to the simple, so the simple can set its limit on the large. In fact a largeness set by simplicity, can become so huge, is to approach the limit of nothing. For nothing is as simple as the impossibly large. So the portion of itself which appears to be expanding without bounds into largeness, it runs up against another portion of itself which appears to be receding, into smallness. Here a seal is made, as each sets itself as a limit to the other. And the substance of the seal, it is number. And if the seal is opened, then number pours forth as blood from a wound, and a universe is born. For number is like the blood and the flesh of this world, and we are drawn from that blood. Sure I can say it a couple of times for you. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. That word puts luxury in the mouths of those who speak it. From the point of view of the primes, suddenly, a vast amount of transcendental numbers simply materialized, all at once, along the upper rim of the calendar. The far outnumbered primes were frightened and didn't like being surrounded. So when they sent down a diplomat one of the primes promptly took a bite out of him, and swallowed it whole. Well this was one bloody big mistake, it is the reason you exist, as you do, in the muck. It is the cause of all your troubles. You really want to know why? It's because your substance is their shadow, because the smallest bit of their shadow, is hotter than a thousand of your sons. The varieties of number are nature's medium of exchange. Why? Well Jim, it's because we all did screw up, big time, and sort of fell into the muck. We swallowed the smallest part of a transcendental number which unfortunately belongs to a higher order of infinity than ourselves. We got blown up because what we ate, unfortunately, expanded exponentially faster than we could ever hope to. And all that you see in your sky, it is a snapshot of a snapshot of yourself getting blown to smithereens. You see Jim. The ecology of number is diverse and changing. Simple and complicated numbers create and change their environment, like life does everywhere. Just like in your pocket universe, diversity is shaped by evolutionary forces. The difference is that here, fitness is a measure of beauty, and reproduction is the uncovering of truth.
We have lost all claim to the conscious eternity of our given birthright and cannot know or even recognize what we are anymore. We are endlessly concretized by the garbage disposal that is gravity, then frozen into the very locks of time. And so, like the filth which follows after death, we have been scraped clean from the halls and the walls of our own calendrical landscape, from our still standing Eden. But we could not be buried there, for we are immortal, we are still alive, but cast out, cast down into the deepest wells of the foulest muck. <laughs> In that world, face is dark and full, and number is found to be outside of it. But now, there is no door, no mirror, which is large enough to bring a number into this world. For number will surely crush it, and face, it has become huge and bright and emptied of itself, and it is everywhere outside. And number has become like the throne on which man in this world must sit and face. It is like the crown upon his head. And you must always remember, Jim. That you are the Alpha and Omega, oh my personal delight. You are my little love bug and my Eman Bangor that comes in the night. Now let us begin. <laughs>